Welcome to a guide that will cover the majority of useful things you should have for bossing when getting started, including every important skill, perks, useful unlocks, and more. This doesn't mean you can't start bossing before you have everything mentioned. In fact, you can start way sooner, but if you don't have something I mentioned, you can make that your next goal or something you slowly work towards to improve your PVM capabilities. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Generally, when we think of PVM skills, we think Prayer, Herblor, and Combat Stats, and these are the three most important ones, but there's more, including Summoning, Archaeology, Invention, and of course, even Dungeoneering. Now, we could go even further and include skills like Slayer and Fire Making, but for the majority of PVM content, you do not need these skills. So what kind of levels do we want to have in these skills? Well, ideally, you'd want to go ahead and get yourself level 95 Prayer and complete the Templates and Tistan Quest to unlock Curses, which are Soul Split, Anquish, Torment, and Turmoil. Soul Split can be used at level 92, but you might as well go for level 95, it's not much more of a stretch. We also would like to have level 96 Herblor, but preferably, if you can afford it, go all the way up to level 99 and boost your stats up and make yourself Elder Overload Sals, the best potions in the game. This Herblor level won't only include overloads, but will also allow you to make other types of potions like Replenishment Potions, which are Adrenaline and Prayer Potions in one, which are incredibly useful for your rotations. Summoning is incredibly useful because you can use damage increasing familiars like Ripper Demons and of course Beast of Burden familiars who can hold tons of food, which you might need when learning bossing. The War Tortoise Familiar can hold up to 18 items and requires level 67, which I would say is the minimum and quite easy to obtain. Summoning is a fast skill to train, given that you have the charms. But if you want to go all the way, get yourself level 99, you'll have access to the Pac Mama Familiar, which holds way more items, and the Ripper Demon, which is incredibly good. I'd like to point out that the Ripper Demon only requires level 96, but, you know, the extra few levels won't cost you that much, especially nowadays. Now, archaeology is interesting because you only really need level 5 and the tutorial completed to get an increase of your maximum health of 500. And this will only take you like 10 minutes to do. I would, however, suggest at least level 56 to get access to the Berserker's Fury Relic, which will set you back about 24-ish mil because you need to use an Amulet of the Forsaken to get this Relic power. This Relic allows you to deal more damage the lower your health is, up to a maximum of 5.5% at an incredibly low health count. With that being said, though, getting up to level 98 Archaeology is a very good idea. You'll get good Relics like Fury of the Small at level 97, which allows you to gain 1% more adrenaline every time you use a basic ability. Persistent a relic you unlock at level 98, which you can obtain quite easily, will prevent your adrenaline draining outside of combat, reducing the need to stall ever. Really good. And you could also potentially use Death Ward at level 81 as well, but that depends on what kind of boss you're doing. Here are some relic setup examples at 500 monolith energy. Yes, you are able to obtain more monolith energy, but you'll have to train archaeology for so long that I don't think it's realistic to recommend in this video. Next up, we have Invention. Now, you can get the majority of good, useful perks below or around level 89. But, with Ancient Invention, you're able to perk up your weapons quite cheaply, and to do this, you do need level 103 Invention. Now, the good thing about Invention is, is that it won't take you very long to get there. In fact, you could probably get to 103 in about a week's of regular play. We'll be covering perks later on in this video. Next up, we have Dungeoneering. Now, if you get level 62, you'll be able to use the Ring of Vigor, which retains 10% adrenaline after using an ultimate ability. This thing also costs 50,000 Dungeoneering tokens, but you can easily farm those for Elite Dungeon 1. It will take you literally, like... 15 to 30 minutes. Now, you can take it one step further and go for level 90 so that you have access to the best bone necklace, which is useful if you're using a bone crusher at some lower tier bosses, but really for the majority of PVM encounters, you're not really going to be using it. And finally, combat skills. I think they speak for themselves. The better they are, the better you're going to PVM. Next up is gear. Now, gear, in my opinion, is fairly straightforward. The absolute baseline is a tier 70 armor set, which is DPS armor, which gives you power bonus, which would be bandles for melee, armor for ranged, or subjugation for magic, and a tier 70 weapon set. But I would say that TAT is recommended, and usually it isn't that much more expensive either, depending on when you're watching this video and what's happening with the prices, because some items really do fluctuate in value. You're also going to want to have at least a tier 70 shield for using the resonance and other defensive abilities when doing bossing. Now, if you bought a two-handed weapon, you're also going to want to have a one-handed weapon Maybe not as important, but it might be useful in case you're going to equip your shield 
use a long-lasting defensive like for example barricade and you still want to be able to attack the boss. I also recommend getting a cheap combat amulet which would be an amulet of glory or maybe a fury and a cheap ring which could be a quest ring like the asylum surgeon's ring which I'll cover later on in this video or something like the leviathan's ring. If you're looking for directions on what to buy and when I highly suggest looking at my ranged magic and melee gearing guides which do include starting setups which you can see on screen now to give you an idea of what's in the guides. These guides are still very much accurate and include a step-by-step -step upgrade order and while a couple of new items have released, I believe the only real big change is the greater concentrated blast ability for magic dual wield making it much better and an upgrade you should get as soon as possible. Next up we have PVM perks and I'm going to show you one example setup with the level requirements to use certain components for these gizmo shells on screen. This is a setup that does have the 103 requirement to get every single thing and it also requires you to buy a blueprint to use the ancient gizmo shells. Now this isn't the only perk example and I'm going to refer to a RuneScape wiki page which allows you to look at a variety of different combinations and what kind of probabilities you have of obtaining those perks every time you use components. This page will be linked in the description below or simply type slash wiki pvm perks in game. Unsurprisingly, I'm going to recommend you unlock every single PVM aura in Warshop at the PVM hub in this video as well. Start by getting the Vampirism aura, in my opinion by far one of the most useful auras when learning for bossing because it allows you to save food as you heal a little bit off of your damage. And unlike the other auras, it takes you about 5 hours of PVM to get it. We then have the Berserker, Reckless and Maniacal Aura, also known as Zerk Auras, which are incredibly good and should be unlocked next. And then finally, for when your Zerk Auras are on cooldown and you can't reset them, the Dark Magic Aura can be a good option as well. Slowly unlocking the boss kill unlocks at the shop isn't a bad idea either, with a maximum of 2000 being required. The fastest way to get this done is by killing bosses with low HP like Zero Mechanic or Glacier, KBD or Godrich Dungeon 1 bosses. Other notable auras include the Penance Aura, the Accuracy Auras and the Invigorate Auras from the Loyalty Point store which may in the future be added to the Marks of War store not sure, and the Majorat Aura which increases your damage by 5% costing 3 bonds. This is an aura you want to unlock later on but it's very good for when you're not using the Zerk Auras and you have 100% accuracy. Here are the most important PVM quests to complete, starting with the Dig Site. The Dig Site unlocks some abilities but the main ones you want to be aiming for and the reason you want to complete this quest is for the Tendril abilities. Most notably the Shadow Tendrils for ranged, extremely powerful ability. Definitely recommend completing this quest because you're going to need it anyways for a bunch of other things. The World Wakes quest is perhaps the most important PVM quest out there because it unlocks Sunshine and Death Swiftness and even Natural Instinct which is a little bit more niche but those other two abilities are ones you're going to want to have for any magical range rotation. They're absolutely essential and if you haven't done the quest already check my guide, link in the description below, get it done. It is absolutely essential. Next up is Desert Treasure, which unlocks the ancient spells, so think Blood Barrage, Ice Barrage. Not as important to get per se, but you might as well go ahead and unlock this because you're going to need this quest for the Temple and Distant quest, which unlocks curses, which you can see at the bottom. 100% worth getting. City of Sentistan unlocks Ancient Spells 2.0, including spells like Animate Dead, which reduces incoming damage by flat amount when using magic tank armor, and spells like Insight Fear, which are incredibly powerful. Finally, we have the Elder Kiln quest, and you only really need this quest to get the Kiln Capes, and Kiln Capes are required to get the upgraded cape, which is the Ignis Cape, and these are best in slot and have a passive special effect. Very much worth getting all three of those. Though it does require you to kill Zuck, which is a tough boss. Alright, here are some other very useful PVM unlocks, including the Asylum Surgeon's Ring, which has a 10% chance to prevent adrenaline loss when using threshold abilities, and it has a 40% chance of saving 25% of your special attack's original cost, so adrenaline, which is really powerful. The only reason I put it in the other section is because the Ring of Death is so meta, and if you have expensive gear, and currently death costs are still an issue, you're probably going to be camping in that ring almost the entire time. Otherwise, if you don't mind switching to the ring when using thresholds or special attacks, it's 100% worth getting and doing the Broken Home quest twice. I think you need to complete it under 37 minutes or so the second time around to unlock the ring. 
It's a challenge, but with a guide, it shouldn't be that bad. Lunar Diplomacy is a good quest to complete to get access to lunar spells, including spellbook swaps, and if you've done Livid Farm, the Disruption Shield spell, which allows you to reduce incoming damage to one really useful i made a full video on it which i'll link in the description below the other stuff is kind of niche i'm not going to stick around too long for those items to explain them if you're interested in them check it out on the wiki the south element e is notably very good if you're doing undead bosses like rise of the six or elite dungeon three when killing tarot cat 20 more damage and accuracy as you can hear, that's pretty good, but only if you're fighting against undead bosses or creatures. Here's a big list of PVM unlocks. Now, these aren't all the most useful unlocks because there are way more, like Limitless, for example, but I think these are the most notable ones and quite easy to unlock, at least some of them. Now, some of these have been mentioned throughout the video in some shape or form, but I'm going to highlight a couple of these. The Corruption Blast and Short Ability are quite cheap and you can buy them or get them as a Rage Drop, and these are very good bleed abilities on single or multi-targets. Enhanced Excalibur is a good healing item which you can use to heal in combat, and it will save you some food. The Tyrion Quiver can be used to store ammunition, and it gives you some prayer bonus. It also has teleports and a variety of different bonuses, but those are the main things that matter. The Slayer Helmet is good if you're doing bosses that can be done on a Slayer task. For example, Demons, Krill. The Spirit Cape is a Dungeoneering reward that can be purchased for 45,000 Dungeoneering tokens, and it actually reduces the Familiar cost or Special Move cost of Familiars by 20% passively, and you can just leave it in your bank. The Guthic Staff is actually quite a good special attack, which you can use on bosses to reduce their defense, and you can also use it in your regular rotation if you don't have Blast Diffusion Boots instead of Detonate. The Lady Dive is an ability that allows you to accurately launch yourself to a certain tile, incredibly useful for some high level bosses. Dreadnips can be used to stun bosses that are not immune to stuns like Telos to delay attacks. Dominion Mines can be used on certain bosses or minions to blast them for 10,000 damage each. And Double Surge and Escape are useful for obvious reasons. And then we come to the final section of this video, the PVM consumables section. Now this may not include everything and this may not be that interesting because it's a list of items you probably already own a bunch of, but it is important to have these in your bank ready to go in your PVM presets. The most obvious ones are of course solid food, sourdobin bruiser, other drinkable items, and tick eating food being blubbers. If you use all three of these and you can keybind all three of them, you're able to heal up incredibly quickly, which can make some PVM encounters where you take a bunch of damage in one go much easier to survive. We then have super restores, which are your go-to flask or potion to restore summoning potions, prayer potions, and special move points. Overloads, to no surprise on this list. Adrenaline, Super Adrenaline or Replenishment Potions, Weapon Poison Plus Plus, and if you have the Herbal Level Weapon Poison Plus Plus Plus, Anti Poison Plus Plus if you don't yet have access to Eld Overload Cells. We then have four different types of Intense Sticks, being Irrits, which reduce incoming poison damage up to 100%, Quarms, which increase your poison damage up to a maximum of 10%, very powerful in combination with Weapon Poison Plus Plus Plus, and Cinder Banes. Spirit Weed Incense Sticks increase your familiar special attack recovery rate by up to a maximum of 40%, and finally, Lantadime Incense Sticks increase your potion timers up to a maximum of two minutes more. We then have the Power Burst of Acceleration, allowing you to yeet around the elite dungeons and the power burst of vitality effectively having the damage you take for a short period of time. We of course also need familiar scrolls if you're using a ripper demon or perhaps using a pack yak and you want to bank items, divine charge for your augmented equipment, Onyxes to recharge your Ring of Death. Vulnerability Bombs, of course, if you want to vault targets and you're not using magic. Armor Spikes to deal some more damage if you're using melee. These can be smithed at any anvil. And I recommend upgrading them to alloy ones because those are better. And finally, of course, the final thing in this video, ammo and runes. If you're using range, but Chrono Bolt E using crossbows is incredibly effective. With that being said, we've come to the end of this video. I hope this video helps you out as I try to stuff as much concise information as possible in the shortest time frame possible. So if you learned something new, be sure to drop a like down below. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.